I went to school and I struggled heavily, I did at school. You don't, you don't realise that it's you, you're just told at school that you're thick. The words tend to sort of scrunch together and make a blur. A lot of the time I'm getting left behind in class. And I take one look at it, it's got writing all over it, and I'm like, right, I can't do that. So my mum sort of got me to see an education psychologist and I was diagnosed with dyslexia. Dyslexia is a specific learning difficulty, which basically means that people with dyslexia think differently. That's really what it means. Um, and it's uh, mainly a problem to do with uh, phonological awareness, which is hearing sounds in words, um, phonological memory, which is um, being able to uh, ha where the phonology is stored in the short-term memory and in rapid naming, which is um, being able to repeat um, quickly uh, symbols uh, and uh, letters and numbers. Um, I was born in the early 60s when um, diagnosis of dys dyslexia and dyspraxia really wasn't known. Um, I went to school and I struggled heavily, I did at school. It's only probably within the last 15 to 20 years that there's been a wider understanding of it and even then that wider understanding is probably amongst people who experience dyslexia themselves and perhaps some schools and some universities and some practitioners. So in, in the workplace for example there's still pretty widespread ignorance of it as well. Dyslexia used to be called, a uh, terrible term, word blindness, uh, just as dyspraxia used to be called clumsy child syndrome. You, you don't, you don't realise that it's you, you're just told at school that you're thick, you know, or, or they, don't, they don't know how to handle you. So I remember going to my senior school and I started off in the high class and then after a while I got moved down and I, I didn't really understand, I suppose I was only about 10 or 11, so you move to high school and you get, you know, suddenly after a while you're moved down to the lower class. So they obviously thought I was bright to start with, but after a while they couldn't work out what was going on. A lot of the time I'm getting left behind in class, so everyone would be moving at a faster pace than me because I was never getting the correct help, so I was always in like lower sets and no one knew how to like teach me properly. So I was right, quite bad at reading and spelling, I couldn't, I couldn't spell. Where people don't understand dyslexia, they often confuse it with laziness, with stupidity, with lack of attention to detail, and it's none of those. Uh, but uh, that's the, the legacy, I guess, of ignorance in those who, who should understand it and who haven't always understood it. When I've been asked to read out loud, it's almost like the words sort of crunch together and this blur comes and you, and you can't see see you know you just can't see what's in front of you in terms of numbers of people um uh, studies now have shown that it's about one in ten uh, so about 10% of the population. Uh, so at that point in a classroom of 30 kids, approximately three children uh, could have it. Um, and the other thing to do with dyslexia is, um, it is the most common of the specific learning difficulties, but it is also um, quite common um, that a child may have more than one um, um, because they occur concurrently. I find maths is really the hardest Primarily, they, the, the, it affects literacy and being able to read and to write and to spell. But also, um, you can see that someone, someone with dyslexia may well find it difficult to throw a ball or ride a bike, uh, to coordinate themselves. I was lucky, my mother was a teacher, so she sort of realised that I was struggling quite early on, because I found sort of reading and writing and sort of um, the sort of process of coordination quite difficult. So my mum sort of got me to see an education psychologist and I was diagnosed with dyslexia. I just sat at the back of the class and letting things flow over my head and just sat quiet and barely took any information in. Um, major problems with B's and D's, um, I, I, I had major problems, I always muddled them up or even through to almost now 
I still have to think about my B's and D's. So if I'm trying to do some work and a teacher hands me a piece of paper and I take one look at it, it's got writing all over it and I'm like, right, I can't do that. But I would have, I would have a go. But to be honest, the teacher would just complain and say that I'm lazy. I hated being asked to read, so we'd go around the class like that everyone would say someone's name and they'd read and I would always read like maybe a sentence, two sentences, pass it on to someone else straight away. I hated reading in front of people. When I looked at the words, the letters were sort of jumbled around a bit and move. The words tend to sort of scrunch together and make a blur. Um, it's not like they danced off the page or anything like that. They just sort of became one mush and I wouldn't be able to decipher what each word was. Or if I did read it, I would read something that just wasn't there. It was just there in my head. You know, something would come out. So, um, I, you know, somebody might it, it might say three men were on a boat, and I would read three men were in a car. I know that even now, sometimes I'll bung an extra e on the end of a word <laughs> in a vain hope that that might be the right spelling for it. Um, and spelling is a struggle, you know, it really is a struggle. I mean, I can see the difference between a spelling like there, there and there, that sort of thing. I don't have issues with that, but I do have issues with consonants and vowels, well, really vowels in, in words. In general, the dyslexic's mind um, may not absorb the same sort of information as the non-dyslexic's mind. So, for example, um, when they are reading, they might not be able to take on board information um, as in reading, being able to process what they're reading. If you have uh, the same two children uh, with the same uh, underlying ability um, and one is dyslexic and one is not dyslexic, what you tend to find is that uh, they both have the potential to achieve at the same level. A lot of PET scans um, and MRI scans have been shown to um, show that the dyslexic's brain is actually physically different to the non-dyslexic's brain. Where there hasn't been enough work done is that it also has emotional difficulties, emotional implications. If you're constantly being told that you're not good enough or you're too slow or you're stupid or you're not as good as the rest of the class, then that's bound to have an impact. Yeah, I mean, I just used to think, especially when you get reports like spelling bad, grammar poor, you just think, it's just not clever. I think the only thing is, when you are dyslexic and you're a kid and you don't know and you're not diagnosed, after being told lots of times you're thick, you begin to think you are thick. At school, it was easier to sort of play the clown, to, to sort of divert the attention away from what was, what was being done. I think it's absolutely imperative that uh, young people get tested as early as possible. If there is um, dyslexia, a hereditary factor, i.e. other members of the family um, have been identified. It's quite a weird sensation actually being told you're dyslexic, or, or, or anything really, but it was quite a weight off my shoulders. I felt quite strangely liberated by it. Uh, but in the real world, um, we always tend to, people, children, grow up and they, they work in their strengths. You know, I, I could do things like, I could take an engine apart, you could give me bits and pieces, I could take the whole thing apart and I could put it back together again. I say I'm good at art, like I, do it, I did it for GCSE, I'll do it for A-level now and I do it in my spare time and stuff like that. I just I enjoy like doing it, working like, with my hands and stuff like that. I think maths, I, I fell in love with maths, but uh, a lot of, uh, so I concentrated mostly on arts. I did, I did art, I did cookery at school and woodwork and metalwork. I was very, very good. I had good fine motor skills, I did, so I could build models and build things all the time. I enjoy history and I always get good, like, it's weird, I always get good marks in my history essays and stuff like that because I enjoy writing the essays, even though I still get all the spellings wrong and all, all that stuff. I'd, I would be good at it, I like it, I enjoy it, so I always find that I'm better at stuff I enjoy. I, you know, I had an option, a chance to leave being a site engineer when the building trade was going through a sort of a dodgy period. And so I went back to college and did my City and Guilds radio, TV, electronics. 
and then I did my degree in computing and psychology. The dyslexia is not a disease um, or, or a virus or something that you can catch and then can get rid of or grow out of. It, it, it's a, a learning difference. It's the way your mind works that thinks differently. And um, it won't ever go away. And throughout life, it will always present different challenges. It's not going to be cured. It's just going to mean that that young person, that person with dyslexia is going to find ways around it and be able to make a fulfilling life for themselves. It'll always be with you, but with compensatory strategies, with intervention strategies. You know, we're a massive advocate of using technology. ICT, use of laptops and computers with the right sort of hardware and software yes, attached to it can be a great help. Typing, using phonetic spell checkers. Also, extra time in exams needs to be considered for a, for a person with dyslexia. Maybe a menuensis, uh, someone helping them to write things down, but not actually doing the work for them. Optometric solutions like glasses or overlays. Drawing in the sand, drawing letters in the sand, or using shaving cream, for example. I didn't even know how to write the word T-H-E then back then the and then I moved to Parkfield and that's when I actually started learning. For stuff to go in my head I find I have to read it uh, certainly if you're re doing research or whatever read it and then write it down that seems to help. I'm forgetful I'll write down everything I need to do as soon as I realise that I need to do it. And just colour coding things makes an enormous difference your colour is red, green, blue, orange and that really, really helps. I certainly now put headings in when I plan an essay or anything else. Highlight specific words so I could accurately like interpret what the question was asking me and I could like, f like formulate it in my head and understand what the question was asking me to do. So I'll have to sort of slow it down and break it down in my head to actually get what they want me to do or what I need to do. Certainly mind mapping helps to get you focused and where you want to go. You have an alternative way of viewing things and understanding things and if we all were the same would be really boring really. People with dyslexia are very creative thinkers, strategic thinkers, uh, visual thinkers, that they have blue sky ideas. I might be dyslexic which is a great thing because I can do x y and z perhaps better than my other peers. They generally surpass other people and that is determination and hard work. Very often find ways in which they can express themselves in a whole range of different ways, such as being artistic, um, being able to problem solve. That they're better at coming up with original ideas rather than actually an original solutions, rather than following, say, the existing way of doing things. The dyslexic person will go, well, why are we doing it like that? Often they are verbally very bright, they're very gifted and they're able to express themselves very well indeed. That they're huge amounts of skills and talents amongst the dyslexic community. Loads of actors and actresses are dyslexic. Keira Knightley, Cher, um, Tom Cruise, Will Smith. Many of the great scientists are dyslexic. Many of the great artists are dyslexic. Jackson Pollock, Picasso, Leonardo da Vinci, from Richard Branson to Steve Jobs. So, uh, so we're proud of our dyslexics. We love them. And uh, people often ask me, am I dyslexic? I think, I wish I was, because <laughs> they're great. Mm -hmm.